In this video, we're going to talk about things that you can do to optimize the conditions for worm population growth. Before we do that, however, I want to set some realistic expectations. There is nothing I can do as a farmer to accelerate the developmental process worms have to go through before they reach reproductive maturity. It's just like human beings. It takes nine months for a fecundated human egg to turn into a fully developed baby. It doesn't matter what you feed the mother, it doesn't matter if you give him high vitamins, probiotics, whatever it is, you're not gonna get that woman to deliver a full grown baby in five months. It's just not happening. So with your worms, it's the same thing. So don't worry so much about there being a specific thing that you can do, a specific food that you can give them that's gonna accelerate their growth cycle. They're gonna take the same amount of time roughly. However, what you can do is to optimize the conditions inside of your worm bins so the worms that are being born get to adulthood and they are able to thrive within your system and that's what's going to generate more worms. It takes about 27 days from mating until you have baby worms. It's usually about two to three worms per egg and then it takes another 40 to 60 days before juveniles reach reproductive maturity. What can you do as a worm farmer to get more and more adult worms ready and able to reproduce and to make sure that their offsprings are going to grow up to adulthood? Because the more adults you have, the faster your colony is going to grow. And that's what you wanna do. You wanna maximize the number of healthy adult worms so that you can get more worms. Worms can live up to five years, so if you have a healthy being, they're going to reproduce a lot faster that that being is going to be able to hold them. So you're going to have enough worms to start new bins eventually. But the first few months, things are going to be a little bit slow. They're not going to be concerned about, oh my god, we need to make babies. That's not going to happen until they are fully acclimated and they, they have all the conditions they need in order to start reproducing and creating new life. So be patient at the beginning, but once you get going, this is the good news, you're gonna have a thriving ecological system inside of your worm bin, and it's going to be a lot easier to start new colonies. And this is why, when you first get 1,000 worms in the mail, there's not a lot of life, there's not a lot of microorganisms going in that space because people that are selling the worms, they're not going to put food scraps in there because that will turn into a pretty awful situation very quickly. So they try to keep it very neutral and it takes several weeks once you start feeding your worms for that biological life to start to come into place, for the microorganisms to start reproducing because the worms are essentially eating the microorganisms so you need an ecosystem to support your worms and this is the thing once you have enough worms in your system then instead of just hand picking a thousand worms and starting from scratch what you're going to do is you're going to get clumps of the worms the bedding the compost and the worm casting everything that is in one worm bin you're going to start dividing it and the bigger the amount of that material that you place in a new container with new bedding, the quicker things are going to go. Why? Because you're not just moving individuals at that point. At that point, you're moving an entire ecosystem. And that's where I want you to realize that when you first start your worms, you got them in the mail, they are individuals. And it's your job as a farmer to add the elements, the conditions to create an e vibrant ecosystem. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Things that you can do to create the conditions for that ecosystem to start to thrive. Because that's what's going to make your worm being resilient. That's what's going to make your worms happier. And that's what's going to guarantee population growth. If you're getting value out of this video, Video, please click like and subscribe to my channel so I can bring more content to you. However, what I want you to think about when you're thinking about population growth of your worms is about exponential growth. Because exponential growth is a pattern that biological entities, that organisms, living organisms follow in their life cycles. The way to maximize worm population is to optimize the environmental conditions that will support the natural reproductive cycle of your worms. 
When it comes to different things that you can do to optimize the conditions within your warm band, there is basic six things that you have to look for. Number one is humidity. Worms need approximately 80% humidity level in order to breathe. They don't have lungs like you and I, so they actually breathe through, through their skin. So in order for them to be able to exchange oxygen from their environment, they need 80% humidity level. That means it's not dripping in there, but it's pretty, pretty wet. When you're setting up a new warm bin, humidity is gonna be low, so you have to spray. Make sure you're not pouring water in there, but you're spraying with a bottle, making sure things are moist. If you see that your warm is store crawling around through your box, that means the humidity is good because they feel comfortable. If your warm's kind of clump, and they stay in a clump, there is either not enough food or the humidity level is so low that they are afraid of drying out because if they dry out, then they die. The second thing they, you have to think about is temperature. So temperature, worms can tolerate temperatures in between 32 and 95 Fahrenheit degrees. However, if you put them in those extremes, they are not gonna be happy. Usually, in my experience, worms are very comfortable in between 50 and 70 degrees. So if outside is in the low 30s or even down in the 20s, if you have them in the basement, they're probably gonna be in a comfortable uh, spot right there. So, so make sure you're paying attention to temperature based on where you live. If you live in a hot climate like California, be careful with the heat waves because that can really add a lot of stress to your warm bin and it can really cook them. And here's a quick trick. If you are in California and you have your worms outdoors or in a situation where you don't have AC available to them and the temperature gets really high, something that I used to do when I was living there, I, I put a plastic bag and kind of a space around, kind of shape, uh, create a little square, and then I drop an ice pack right in there and then I close the bag so worms don't crawl inside of your plastic bag. And then the ice pack is gonna keep your worm bin temperature a little bit lower and I would do that every day before going to work and then in the afternoon when I came back home I would change the ice pack because that's when the temperature was going above 90 degrees and it was really hot. I wanted to make sure my worms were nice and cool so you can actually do that. It's an easy way to regulate temperature. So another thing that I works really well for me is because I have essentially two plastic bins one in case inside of the other and the one in the bottom has wood chips if things get really hot in the upper bean, worms always have the choice to just go down and go into the wood chips. But what that does is also adds another layer of buffer, a whole different environment, which is wood chips. And the worms usually go up and down and they like to hang out in the wood chips, especially if it gets really hot, they're gonna find comfort in the wood chips. The food, wood chips are also getting a lot of the excess liquids that drip from your composting system from the warm bin, so that also gets really kind of mellow in there. The wood chips soak in a lot of the excess humidity, so they retain it, so it's a nice, comfortable space. And your warm bin also doesn't have any issues with smells of, or odors because the wood chips are essentially more carbon material and also the space in between wood chips adds air circulation which is great to prevent anaerobic bacteria which is what would potentially cause problems in your worm bed. The next thing that I want you to think about is bedding. I use leaves for my bedding for different reasons. Number one, they are a clean renewable resource. There is a lot of them at the end of the fall and worms really like it. When you think about where worms would naturally be in the wild, what's called the leaf litter under the tree canopy. So worms naturally tend to gravitate towards leaves because they have air spacing, they attract a lot of microorganisms, they produce a lot of food for microorganisms, and then the worms get drawn to that. So the next thing you wanna think about when you're thinking about worms is pH. So that is the acidity level inside of your composting system. When it comes to acidity, worms can tolerate in between usually nothing lower than five and nothing higher than nine. And if you're adding food scraps to your bin, they can turn more acidic. The way I deal with that, I create different sections within my bucket. So one section may get high in acidity. I add a lot of eggshells to neutralize that acidity and bring it down. And then I make sure there is enough room in the bin where the acidity, where there is no food scraps, so the worms have places to go if things start getting really tight in there. 
and please check out my other video on Bokashi and how I use Bokashi to feed my worms because that's something that I've been doing for the last few years and it really helps me accelerate the decomposition process inside of my worm bin and it also helps a lot with the excess fluids that a lot of food scraps have. So stay tuned for that. You want your worm bin to have more carbon, more brown material than green material or green waste. So think about it in the same terms you will do with a composting bin. In your composting bin, your warm material is usually the vast majority and then you add your food scraps and that turns into what's called the high nitrogen green material. Your worms usually feel happier when that ratio is 50 to 1. So the more brown material, the more leaves you add to your composting system, the healthier worm population you're likely to have. Your worm bin is an ecosystem. For the worm bin to be really effective as a composting vermiculture system, you want to have an active ecosystem with a wide range of organisms and different areas for those organisms to thrive. So once you have the first bin going, that is going strong and then you have a lot of worm castings, then creating new bins is gonna be a lot faster because you're working with a full ecosystem, you're essentially transfer an ecosystem, giving them more food, giving them more space to multiply. And also in the comments, please tell me what are all the questions that you may have that you would want me to address and let me know things that you're doing in your composting system that you see that are working for you that I'm not touching.